record. I'm going to record now. Okay. He had a very strong character. He, just like we celebrate our character traits every month, right? For perseverance or this month is compassion. Abraham Lincoln was somebody who had all of those traits. And so we celebrate that. And if you'll notice, we have teachers who have special socks that have Abraham Lincoln's face on them. That is because they too are acting like Abraham Lincoln himself being honest and having a good, strong character and stepping up when he is needed, right? When they're needed and inspiring others, that persevering, even when things are hard, Abraham Lincoln was someone who did that. And working through the hard times, even when people are disagreeing, but making the whole community a better place and being able to know that it's okay that people maybe have different ideas and thoughts, but we can all come together and be in a place where we all feel that we're safe and that we are connected and we belong. And that is a really important part of what we do and why we celebrate Abraham Lincoln. So I have, I know some first grade friends um, uh, that we're going to share some writing Teachers, if you had a student that was going to share something, now would be a great time to let them walk down here to the office with their work, and we will get ready for that. So come on down for those students who are going to share. All right. So I want you guys to take a minute and think, what is one way that you could be just like Abraham Lincoln. What is one way? What one way? Maybe it's that you are going to always tell the truth, even when it's hard. I love when students are in my office, and even if they've made a mistake and they tell the truth, that's super important, right? What is something you could do? Something you could do. All right, I'm gonna make sure my friends are here. I think I'm gonna have some come in. Here we go. I'm ready. Yep, come on in guys. Come on in, Debbie. Okay, here we go. Let's see. What's this say? Oh, Khalees, always be honest. Khalees and Liam, I love it. Okay, we are gonna have first sharing Miss Abby McNulty. Come right up to the camera here. Wait right there, we'll go one at a time. Abraham Lincoln was nice. He had the $5 bill and penny. He was born in 1809. He was the 16th president. He was an amazing leader. Wow, great job. Abby, you want to show them your amazing writing? Look at this, everybody. Oh, yay. Look at Abby, they're clapping for you. Thank you, Abby. You may head back in there. All right, Reese Tappen, we have Reese Tappen here to share. Abraham Lincoln was smart. He ended slavery. He worked on a farm. He is on the $5 bill and the penny. He was an amazing leader. <gasps> nice job, Reese. You want to show them your work too? Oh, amazing. Yay. All right, we have up next Miss Charlie Marchant. Go ahead and read to us. Abraham Lincoln was a great guy. He had three pets, a dog and a chicken and a cat. He was assassinated. He was on the $5 bill. He made our world a better place. <gasps> oh my gosh, show your amazing work. You guys, first grade, you are rocking it here. This is amazing writing. I don't know, are you sure you're first grade here? I don't know about that. Maybe you're a little bit older here. 
Because he's going to get lost. That's okay. So, I'm too scared to say it. Oh, I can, I can do it with you. And then I'm going to let Douglas O'Malley. Abraham Lincoln was a great leader. He ended slavery and is on the $5 bills. Wait, is on $5 bills. He was very tall and he was born in 1809. He worked on a farm and was self-taught. I love Abraham Lincoln. Okay, go ahead. I'll read it for you. Woo! Way to go, Douglas. Look at that. Great ideas. I love it. Okay. Thank you. And our last one is my friend, Desi. And Desi has requested that I read for him. You can head back down to class. Great job, Douglas. Here we are. Oh my goodness, look at his long, very big, tall hat. Desi says, Abraham Lincoln was amazing, was an amazing president. Abraham was carved into a monument, oh, into a mountain, yes. Abraham Lincoln um, hid things in his hat. Oh, Desi, you have amazing facts. And Abe made our world a better place. Well done, Desi. I love that. You're so right and great, unique facts. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, a big round of applause to our students who are willing to share some writing. Oh, that's the best. Okay, so I have a really special, I'm gonna close my door, hold on just a minute. I have a really special story that I would like to share with you all. I know that it's time for lunch for some of our friends and so that's okay, it's recording now. And so you can hear the story when you come back. So don't worry, all right? So this is a really special story because it has a really important message. And it's also, you guys, this is really special. It's autographed by the author herself. Isn't that exciting? So it's a story that you may not have ever read because I know I hadn't and I learned something new. So here we are. Abe Lincoln crosses a creek, a tall, thin tale in introducing his forgotten frontier friend. All right. Kentucky in 1816. Now here's an old tale of two boys who got themselves into more trouble than bear cubs in a candy store. I like it so well, I've asked my friend John to help out by drawing some pictures. All stories have a time and place, and this one's no different. It happened on the other side of yesterday, before computers or cars, in the year 1816. This green Kentucky Valley is our place. Don't you feel like sticking your toes into that rushing water? That's Knob Creek. Life was hard for many folks then, especially those in slavery. And in just a few years, all of the cares of America would fall on the shoulders of one tall, thin man. But in 1816, he's only seven. Here he is fetching wood for his mother. All spring, he's been helping his father plant corn and pumpkins. Look now, he's stopping to watch a wagon rumble by. I dare say you've guessed his name. Do you know who it is? Abraham Lincoln. He'll grow up to be our 16th president. There's another boy here too, sitting on that rock waiting for Abe. That's Benjamin Austin Gulliher. Austin for short. Now, I can just hear you grumbling. Who? Oh, that feller isn't in my history book. What do I care? Well, Austin is Abe's first friend. 
His, he's three years older and a, as proud of Abe as a big brother. Abe's legs were long, his arms were long, why even his ears were long, Austin would say later. And when it came to being smart, he was way yonder ahead of me. All right, that's what we need to begin. A time, a place, and our characters. Two boys named Austin and Abe. Now, where were we? Oh, I know. Austin's just waved at his friend, remember? Hello there, Austin, Abe calls out. Yesterday, I saw some partridges down over by Knob Creek. Let's go find them. Don't get too near the creek, warns Abe's mama, Nancy. It's been raining something fierce and the water is high. We won't, mama, Austin and Abe chime together. Then they scurry directly there wearing nothing but long homespun shirts. <clears throat> Recognize his house there? Okay, here is Knob Creek. It's waters rushing through the limestone rock into a deep, dark pool. I'd be scared to cross, wouldn't you? But Abe points to the other side of the creek. Let's go, Austin. That's where I saw the partridges. Abe's only thinking about the birds, not about the raging water before him. After all, he's just seven. Raise your hand if you're seven. Not a great leader yet with the union to save. Why, he's barely learned his letters. I don't know, Abe. The water is high, Austin frowns, and we can't swim. We can get across that log easy, says Abe with a plucky grin. I dare you. Uh-oh, what do you think is going to happen here? All right, replies Austin, gulping hard, then putting one foot in front of the other. He tiptoes across. And then, uh-oh, careful there. <gasps> what do you think is going to happen? I made it. Let's all clap together. Austin made it. Austin turns back to look for his friend. Whoop. Uh-oh, I sense trouble coming, don't you? Abe takes a big breath and begins. His feet are slippery, the log is slippery. He inches across. Here comes the bit that's a mite scary, the part where if this were a movie, the music would get rumbly and you might cover your eyes. Abe looks down at the water swirling and spinning and suddenly he's dizzy. Alas, alack, oh dear, he's head over heels. And then, uh-oh. Hold on one minute be sure we get this right because maybe it didn't happen like that. I mean, would Abe and Austin really have walked across the log over that whirlpool? They weren't that foolish, were they? No, I'm almost sure those boys would have crawled. So let's try it again. Now then, Austin stoops down, puts both hands on the log. He holds on tight, Bit by bit, he pulls himself across to the other side. How about give him some encouragement? Yeehaw! Come on! Woo! Hooray! Austin is safe! Your turn, Abe, Austin says, squishing his toes in the mud. Uh-oh. I'm afraid this isn't much better. Look! Abe's in trouble from the start. His stomach feels queasy. His head's all a whirl. He gets halfway and he's stuck. Don't look down nor up nor sideways, Austin hollers. Can Abe even hear Austin above all the racket? John, could you please stop painting that noisy water? Do you see the artist, right? The illustrator's painting there. Just look right at me and hold tight. Austin says, but Abe can't help looking down. He loses his grip. And then, 
alas, alack, oh dear, he he's head over heels. And then, splash, wait, where's Austin? Now, John, don't let him wander off to chase a partridge, not at the most important moment of his life. <gasps> Do you see him? He's there. Whew, there he is. He must have been there all along because he was Austin, Abe's first friend, loyal and true till the day he died. What's that you're saying? Abe's still in the water while I'm rambling on? His head went under again? Wait, I'm trying to remember what happens next. Hmm. I'm pretty sure Austin doesn't say, don't worry, Abe, I'll save you because I know you're on earth for a great purpose. And I don't expect Abe sputters back, stop yapping and help. No, I think Austin just leaps into action. Or maybe he uses a sycamore branch or a fishing pole. Well, we'll let John decide what sketch to paint for that's the thing about history. If you weren't there, you can't know for sure. <gasps> Abe's on land at last. See what's happening there? Abe's on land at last, but he looks almost dead. <gasps> Austin pounds him until so much water pours out of his mouth it makes a lake. For a long time, Abe is still as still as Austin's heart. At last, Abe coughs. He opens his eyes and smiles up at his friend. What a relief. I thought you were a goner, Austin says. I'm mighty grateful, Abe whispers from his throat raw from swallowing half the creek. Better not tell anyone, Austin says, or we'll be in trouble. I won't, but I'll never forget it, Abe promises, not as long as I live. Then they stretch out on the rocks and bake in the sun till they're dry. We could end our tale here. Two happy friends in the sunshine long ago, but I expect you want to know what happens next. Turn the page. Okay. Not long after the Lincolns move, not long after the Lincolns move to Indiana, in time, Abe goes to the White House. Whoa, hold on a minute. I'm afraid you've got it wrong, Austin. Wasn't there at the president's side? I, oh, excuse me. I'm afraid you got it wrong. Austin wasn't there at the president's side. Put him back by Knob Creek where he belongs, raising a family, riding a mule through the woods. Telling stories of his first great friend till he dies at the right old age of 92. At long last, resting under a gravestone that reads, Lincoln's Playmate. For the truth is, Abe and Austin never do meet again. But like he promised, Abe doesn't forget Austin. And one dark day in the midst of the Civil War, or so the story goes, Abe will be heard to say he'd rather see Austin Gallagher again than any other living man. I like to think that's true, don't you? Now we're coming to the last page. About all that's left is to remind you of the moral of our story. Listen to your mother and don't go near Swollen Creeks. What? Oh, you don't think that's really the point of the story? A mite weak, perhaps? A mite. Then how about this? Remember Austin Gallagher, because what we do matters, even if we don't end up in history books. Yes, let's remember Austin Gallagher, who one day long ago, when no one else was there to see, saved Abraham Lincoln's life. And without Abraham Lincoln, where would we be? But that's a story for another day because ours at last is done. The end. All right, so today we will be coming around with cake. Teachers, you will get to decide when your students get to enjoy that cake. And students, as you enjoy the yummy cake, be thinking to yourself and reminding yourself, just like our story said, that what we do 
matters. What you do matters. And even if we don't end up in a history book, what we do matters. So happy birthday, Abraham Lincoln, and have a great day, everybody.